what are we going to be checked for the design for manufacturing and assembly that is nothing but the dfma so this is the automotive engineering methodology we need to have we need to follow to make sure the part will be more effective cost effective so we'll check one by one what exactly this dfm means so we have this as known as design for manufacturing and assembly the full form of the dfma we're going to be so similar to the dfma we're going to be at the dfmea so that we can check in separate uh, video so what exactly it mean for the dfme or why we require that so basically you can check like in north america there are the many companies are moving from the low to the higher volume production and in that the small to medium or the volume this operator uh, operation facilities or this manufacturer need to go for more cost effective as well as a product effective design so for that reason they are doing this kind of their studies engineering methodologies they're going to be follow to make sure they will give the best competitive cost as well as product okay so how, how it going to be we will check separately so this is a tool a help to the companies to meet the customer expectation like there are the many things what we have it might be the cost it might be the quality it might be the design what they want okay so basically to reduce the cost we can do this manufacturing and assembly and design for then accelerate the time to the market so we can optimize the time we can reduce some processes we can evaluate it then improve the communication between the functional team supply chain production or manufacturing what are we going to be behind between so that we can check as well then improve the manufacturing efficiency so these are some of the causes we're going to be able to make sure we'll go for the design for assembly or why we require the design for assembly so basically this dfma having a two major important key so that is something like we have design for manufacturing and design for assembly so combined the design for manufacturing and assembly going to be called as a dfma so design for manufacturing and assembly so what difference we have for design for assembly as well as design for manufacturing okay so there are very similarity as well as there are some differences we're going to be have for both and combinedly that going to be called as dfma so we will check for the design for assembly first so the product simplification is required in terms of the assembly okay so we need to make sure the assembly how it going to be refined redefined so with respect to that we can make sure we can reduce some part purpose we can define check function we can check and we can make sure the part will be assembled properly and with with respect to that we can reduce the cost and everything so again design for manufacturing we can say it's it's cost simplification with respect to the manufacturability so we need to make sure the criticalness what we have to make the cost of the tool so that we need to reduce so again that in, includes something with the material selection it might be the design process like manufacturing processes how we can eliminate that in design itself so for that reason we're going to be use this design for assembly as well as manufacturing so in detail if you just check for the design for assembly what it mean by so what exactly the things we can do in design for assembly so here you can check so design for assembly contain like minimum the part count so that we can do so it will be very helpful to that like when we're going to be reduce the part definitely the cost will be reduced again here you can find when we're going to be reduce something like locating feature okay so that we can make sure the part will be self locate though no extra additional self locating be required or we can say the self fastening features we will have so how we can check that like using a positive fixation rather than we're going to be used a snap rather than we're going to be use the metal clip lantern clip plastic clips we're going to be use the snap fit so that again you can say the cost while assembly or the time as well as assembly so then better part handling so again we can check that so part will be handled properly so if there are the n number of part we have so that we can reduce we will have the single part kind of this standardizing the part if we have the standard parts we can directly use that so no no need to create no need to maintain separate sheet for that then whenever possible we can go for the symmetry part so that is again the one thing we're going to be have over here then minimize the symmetry part to be get fit wrongly so this is something that the pokayo we're going to be used to make sure there will be reorientation should not be there okay so with respect to that this is we can do to make sure the part will be get assembled properly and this is known as design for assembly we will check and make sure we can reduce all the terms what we have the cost process time then similar to that we're going to be the design for assembly design for manufacturing so this design for manufacturing we can see somewhere here Okay, so this is something like twenty-five design for manufacturing. So we can check 
the wall thickness whatever we're going to be have for the part okay that we can check we can we can need to have the constant wall thickness and we need to make sure the part will be like we'll go for quick cooling kind of thing so that again it will be helpful for the manufacturing so what are the top we require for class a three degree class b 0.5 degree so that we can make sure it has to be on a part so easy to manufacture the parts so if there is a structure graining pattern we're going to be have so with respect to that again we have some rules so in one degree like point not not one inches so that is close to one inches is equals to point not to somewhere like you can you can check that value exactly what we have in mm so the structure depth depending upon that you can check even the rib thickness what as per the material we need to have the 40 to 60 percent of beside feature of nominal wall thickness that you can you can check this is a thumb rule we're going to be used as per the tool maker experience and oem experience so whenever there is a transition with respect to from thick to thin session or rather than that you need to make sure it has to be a uh, uniform okay so if there is an undercut definitely we are checking for a slider lifter requirement and that we need to make sure the slider lifter travel we need to calculate and make sure there should not be anything so this is how we can check for the plastic component so design for assembly as well as manufacturing so how it going to be help to get that particular okay so you can check like uh, whenever we're going to be check the organization going to be do this perform this so what kind of thing we can uh, we can take over or come after this okay so this will be always for the price quality and the cycle time it's going to be effect okay so this we're going to be checked like whenever the part we're going to be have in in this terms we, we have the price cost then the quality and the cycle time okay so that we can reduce we can improve and we'll eliminate some part we will check we'll make sure the the process or the repeatability should not be there or there will be no repeat work we're going to be getting so how much impact we're going to be have for this uh, of manufacturing as well as assembly so you can check the manufacturing impact is 30 percent uh, out of the 100 and the design we're going to be the 70 percent impact over here whenever we are considering the manufacturing and assembly of this okay so the sequence for this this is again important thing we're going to be have the sequence how it's going to be flow so we have the concept design with respect to that we need to go for the design assembly and from the design from assembly we're going to be move for the design for manufacturing okay so this is something like the flow we're going to be have for this particular sequence analysis and this is how we're going to be conduct the analysis and we can conclude where we're going to be reduce the cost when we can reduce the time process so this we can checked with this design for manufacturing as well as assembly 